One evening, James had to wait at the big station for Edward to arrive with his train. This made James cross. Late again! Edward only laughed, and James fumed away to the sheds. Edward is impossible. He clanks about like a lot in old iron, and he's so slow he makes us wait. Duck and Percy were indignant. Old iron, slow, quacked Duck. Edward could beat you in a race any day, sweet Percy. Really? I'd like to see him try. James's driver was feeling ill when she came to work the next morning. The fireman was worried. Chris, you don't look too well. I'm fine, Anne. I don't have the off days anyways. They went to the station to find their train, but the only thing there was ducking in the cloud of steam. The station master walked up. Duck safety valves best. You ought to get your train yourself. Wiss and wiss, muttered James as he departed. was not feeling too graceful when they arrived at the goods yard. Anne took her to the signal box, and when she was returning, she found James leaving. She jumped off the second half of the stairs and chased after him. The signalman was flipping switches frantically when Anne walked in. All traffic halted. The line's clear until Marin, called the signalman at last. I'm going to kill him. Slow down. I saw two boys jump into his cab, and I didn't see them get down. Just let me catch them, she said grimly. I'll teach them to mess with my engine. Everyone jumped when the telephone rang. The signal man picked it up. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, gotcha, mm-hmm, I like that. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, all right, bye-bye. They turned and they're sending an engine. Edward was at the big station when a very frantic James came flying past. No, James! Sorry, Gordon, I can't stop! Moments later, an inspector came up. He had a rope. Quickly now, we're going at the number five! Sydney was perplexed. What happened? Hi, Jackie. The Edward departed the station with more determination than water he had in his clothes. James had gotten a long way ahead, and Edward would have to use every ounce of steam to catch up. We're coming! We're coming! We're coming! As we're Edward coming, began to climb the viaduct, the inspector coming, climbed out of the coming, cab and we're on coming, to the we're footplate. Coming, we're coming! We're coming! We're coming! We're coming! We're coming! We're coming! James! I'm going to slow you down! Try using your brakes! I can't! They won't let me! Meanwhile, the inspector was trying to lasso James's buffer like a cowboy. The engine swayed and lurched. Edward felt like he was going to best. Steady boy, said Charlie. The inspector nearly fell, but he caught himself just in time. At last, got him! Charlie checked the engine speed and Sidney scrambled across to James's cab to stop the children from messing with his controls. They slowed to a halt. Edward shunted James to the goods yard. There, they would wait for passing trains. He needed to catch up with the timetable. Looks like the old iron caught you after all. Oh, I'm sorry, mumbled James. Thank you for saving me, Edward. That's alright. What are friends for? The fat controller was waiting for them when they returned to Sudrian City. He thanked the crew profusely before going to talk to his engines. James, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Are you okay? I believe so, sir. That's good. Now go get some rest. Then he walked away with Edward. As for you, I'm sending you to the wax 
for a complete overhaul. Oh, thank you, sir. It would be lovely not to find. The fat controller had a stern talk with the boys before handing them over to police. They spent a few days locked up before their father bailed them out. He banned them from watching trains flow. James was glad when Anne returned from hospital, but he missed Edward even more. Edward returned to a chorus of whistles from friends old and new, but he mustn't say any more, or else I'll ruin a future story.